This is a demonstration to illustrate, you know, why we want to use functions and how to use functions for validation. So we'll start with um, tasks, which is one of the templates that you can download from Microsoft. And we'll give it a name, tasks1, because I have a tasks already. Okay, we'll cancel all these things and close the windows that are opened. The first thing we'll do is to take a look at the design of the tasks table. So open it in design view. We can see there's a title for each task, a priority for each task, a status, and also a percent complete. If you look at these two fields, they are kind of related because the status can be not started, but it is using a lookup table Okay, there we go. It's using a lookup, so it can have you know a status of in progress. It can have you know completed and deferred and so on. So one of the things that you know people should do is to enforce the rule that a task cannot be not started and yet ha yet have a non-zero percent complete. Um, it should not have a status of complete and yet have a non-100 percent complete uh, of percent completed. So let's just say that we want to specify that logic. Now that logic may have to go to a few places. For example, it may have to go to in the form when we look at you know task details. Um, we may want to enforce that rule when we go to report, go to all tasks. We also may want to indicate tasks that may have a problem. So what we need to do is to specify the log specify that logic once, and the best way to do that is to use a function. To define a function, we go to database tools, go to visual basic, and the first thing we want to do is to add our own module. So click modules, right click, and say insert module. And we'll rename this module immediately to indicate what this module is for. So we say this is mod validate. And now we define our function that basically indicates whether a task is valid or not. So it's best to call the function task validate or task is valid depending on how you want to um, look at the function. In fact, task is valid is probably a better name. And it will need at least two parameters. We need one parameter by val which reflects the status so by val status as string and note that this parameter at this point has nothing to do with the status the status field inside the table it is just a parameter um, the second parameter is by val and I'll call this completion and it is going to be a double which means it can be a fractional number and then the function as a whole is going to return a boolean value to basically say whether the task is in fact valid or not. Inside the subroutine, we have to specify the logic to say you know, whether a particular task is valid or not. And we can do this. We can specify all the conditions where the task is invalid. So we can say if status is, oh, I cannot remember those names. So let me switch back to access, not started. Okay, so we switch back. If status is not started and completion is not zero, then we have a problem. So in this case, we'll say task is valid is false. Else if status is, okay, let's double check again how it is spelled, completed, okay, status is completed and completion is different from one, then we'll also say task is valid equals to false. So we can specify a whole bunch of um, invalidate, in, invalid rules and this last one is, uh, we can say status is in progress. Okay, make sure we spell it correctly.
and then we can specify completion is actually less than one or completion is greater than oops uh, I have to specify that completion equals to one or completion equals to zero and we also oops uh, syntax error expected then oh, okay forgot to specify the word then then task is valid is also going to be false the last case here which is just the else by itself is going to say task is valid is true and then we specify and if and so here we have a function that contains the logic to check to make sure the status of a task is consistent with the percent completed so let's go ahead and save it and then switch back to the database form so the best way or the easiest way to do this is to go to our forms and just go to task details located in design view and associate that code you know to the forms own event which is uh, we can use before update and then specify code builder and to basically just to say cancel equals to not uh, what was the name it's uh, task is valid and then this time we can get the information from the field so we can specify the two fields going back to database here to look at the names one is status and one is percent space complete so switching back to here we can specify the first thing we pass is status as a field from the table and then the second one is um, the field percent complete Okay, and we need a negation here because we want to cancel only if a task is checked and it is invalid okay so we go ahead and save this code switch back to here and we can start this form oh okay doesn't let me close the table view first and then we can switch the form into the actual implementation view so we'll say task title is um, acquire material um, let's not worry about these things here and just sub specify percent complete is five and we'll say yep go ahead and save and it does not allow me to update the record and it's giving me all these uh, runtime errors because uh, we don't have any records already in there but basically it stopped the update now if I go back and specify 0% and say save and new then it has no problem saving it so this is a so at the same time I can also create a query um, to use the same function so that I can go through the entire database or to go through the enti entire tasks table and locate all the tasks that may have an inconsistent setting um, between the status and the percent complete so this is a demonstration of how to use function to share the same validation logic between multiple components of the same database thank you for watching